Onion. This, my boys, may be one of the characters that I think is the coolest that I really, uh, really want to roll for, but cannot. My boys, it's time to man to man talk. You know what I'm saying? It's time to like degen to degen. Kitsune masks, fox masks. I don't know about you guys, but like, ah. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about Oedo Ninon as well as all of the other updates that are part of this patch. And so without further ado, let's just jump into the content because like this should be monthly routine. Although I think this is actually coming like twice a month. Regardless, boys, Oedo Ninon, Onion, she is finally here. And so as you can see, her banner is going to start in about a week's time. Let's do a quick evaluation on this Ninin. And so boys, here is the Oninon. Let's go have a look at her skills. She is, um, she's actually pretty freaking cool. So starting off with her UB, we've got Ninja Arts Fujiyama Shuriken, where she inflicts massive damage to the frontmost enemy. And if the skill crits, the damage is tripled, which is honestly pretty nutty if you think about it. And so the first thing that should come to mind is that uh, you got to stack the crit. If you are using Oninon, then you're probably going to be using her with like your V Shizuru or like your Shinobu. Shinobu with the UE of course because that's the only time she gives the crit buff okay but literally nothing else to be said about this one it just does big damage and it does even bigger damage if it crits okay moving on to skill one we got ninja arts reversal swallow this is another very very straightforward skill for oninon i think actually to be honest oninon is a very very straightforward character and i think by the end of this evaluation you will see why so for her skill one she inflicts medium physical damage to the frontmost enemy and also inflicts a small physical defense down pretty sweet. The defense downscaling is going to be at 20% of your skill level, so we're probably going to be talking about like 35-ish, maybe 30, when we are looking to scale at about 130 level. Honestly, quite decent. And so with that said, let's move on to skill two, which is Ninja Art Shadow Clone Technique. It's like some kakebunshin shit, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so on this one, she applies medium physical attack and action speed buffs only to the user. However, this buff is actually freaking cracked out, like physical attack, 11 times the skill level that's about like probably going to be 1.5k attack and as for the action speed it is a 100% action speed which is comparable to Monica's and we already know how valuable Monica is now and so boys as you can imagine she is going to be supercharged for quite a long time however we can't say for certain until we have a quick look at the attack pattern so boom we have a skill 2 straight into a skill 1 in an auto and then a skill 2 into a 1 into an auto into a 1 back to skill 2 honestly this is is like this is like my ideal kind of rotation you know i look at this and i'm like this is pretty much like a hundred percent uptime on the defense down as well as the attack speed and so in terms of dps oninon is your girl however in terms of utility we have none and my boys and especially the ones that have been around for a while you already know what the implications of that is very much going to be used in like your lunar tower your clan battle as well as your story mode and probably not very much in your pvp because as we all know if you are into the pvp scene pvp generally speaking right now is like full physical cleave meta as well as mages and so unfortunately single target specialists like your eriko actually eriko gets some use but like your kari your jita like the old store breakers is kind of we've kind of fizzled out on that one and so yeah oninon's utility is primarily going to be in the clan battle however now we are at the part where we got to be like okay well do we roll for her or not well she sounds like a freaking powerhouse right i do want to pull your attention to these guys over here and so if you guys have not seen this sheet before i'm freaking calling cap because like i talk about this sheet like every two videos but tldr these are all of the comps that the chinese were using as they went through their clan battles and as I scroll through, you're going to notice there aren't overly many comps with the Oninon. Like, honestly, that is not to say that she is not used at all. I'm pretty sure there are a couple of comps, like maybe on this side there. There's one Oninon over there. However, it is at this point where the physical meta is actually like, it's quite well defined. Like, you're almost always going to be having like your Makoto, your Muimi, your Shinobu, your Eriko, your Christina, your Jita, your Shiori, and your Tomo. And sometimes your XINF for like you, um, you Ilya enjoyers. And so yeah, whilst Oninon is actually very, very good on paper, it's very, very hard to dethrone any of these characters. And honestly, I don't know how I missed Kari over here the dog. And so after all of that rationale, and I'm about to tell you the real kicker, which is that she is a permanent unit, I am going to say a big sorry to Oninon. You are perma. 
And unfortunately, you aren't overly meta. Like, if any of you are missing a lot of these units, then she could be worth pulling on. But the fact that she is a permanent unit, and like Kuka Oedo before her, she will still be available in the regular premium rotation. Don't take my word for it. Take crunchy rolls. I am going to have to recommend a don't pull for Oedo Ninon. I'm sorry, girl. Girl, I'll come back for you one day, man. I'm so sorry. Anyway, boys, moving on. We have, oh my god, here we go again. <laughs> so we've got the little lyrical focus gacha up. And so this is essentially your Kyoka rate up with the Mimi rate up with the Misogi rate up. To be honest, between the Kyoka banner and the Oninon banner, I would say Kyoka is probably higher priority. Especially because she sees so much use in CB, but not only that, she is about to be getting her UE, which is going to quadruple her crit damage. So boys, normally when you crit, you do double damage. Damage. With Kyoko's UE, she's going to quadruple damage. So yeah, if you had to pull, like if you're going to pick between Oninon and Kyoka, I would say go Kyoka. But even then, Kyoka is farmable and she is perma. I would highly recommend that you don't roll for her. Save for Summer Boys. Save for the Summer Suzuna, okay? All right, and so moving on, we have the Little Lyrical Adventures Revival event. And I have seen a lot of comments. I have seen a lot of comments about these uh, these rerun events. It's like, oh man, these rerun events, they, they suck up my gems and stuff. No, boys, no. These events are a net gain in gems. They are always a net gain in gems. I can't remember how much the net gain is, but it is quite significant. It's like 10 pulls or something. Especially because all of the first time rewards are always reset on these guys. There is absolutely no reason that you don't do these events unless you're going to like nine times or 10 times refresh. Like when it starts getting to a hundred times the refresh for the gems, a hundred gems a refresh. If you're refreshing like that much to do this one, then I don't know. I think you got your priorities wrong. <laughs> all right, so moving on, we have the Misogi Mimi shards coming from this one over here. This is actually incredibly useful because Mimi shards Shards, Mimi is also about to get her UE. And boys, Mimi's UE, if you didn't know, she essentially does AoE damage. She like does some deceptively long range damage. And honestly, it makes her fantastic for not only CB, but PVP as well. However, we'll cover that in another video when we cover all of the UEs for the next batch. And speaking of that, if you guys have been watching my previous videos, I was like, oh man, save all of your Lunar Tower Heart Shards or like wherever you get your Heart Shards because we might get the Kyoka UE, we might get the Mimi UE. I actually don't see the announcement here. I don't see the announcement for the UEs uh, coming up before the next CB. I think we're safe. I think we're safe. However, don't take my freaking word for it. So honestly, save those Heart Shards until we get the confirmation for CB date and the confirmation for the next batch UE dates. All right, and so that is that one over there. Next, we have the second April Tower of Luna is coming soon. Hold up did we already have one and also wait a second it's coming in wait it's coming in like two days time what the frick i don't know if this is what the other servers got but to be honest like i'll freaking take it getting earlier or possibly accelerated like i don't know tower of lunas or lunar tower means that we are going to be getting more heart shards faster and i don't know about you guys but like i say this every freaking video i'm starved man i'm starved and so with this update we'll be going to 250th floor with the ex very nice Oh god, just look at that freaking thick ass, like holy moly, they freaking like, they hit the thighs man. These boys do not skip out on leg day. Anyway, we are very very deep in our rotation of the Zodiac bosses, we got April clan battle coming up with potentially multi-target. Now, the interesting thing about this announcement is that I don't see any mention of the multi-target system in here. So honestly, that's making me kind of feel like, well, is there actually like multi-target that's coming? I don't know the answer to that. And so that's why I would still say, hold on to those heart shards, hold on to the equipment before you go slam it. Let's go see what these piggies are. But regardless, boys, we've got this CB coming up in about 10 days uh, at the end of the month. I believe that's like a Tuesday. So like, like F all you guys who freaking have a working life, like, like myself. And to wrap things up, we are earning Chica memory shards this time. I actually can't remember if my chicken is five star. I don't know. All I can say is look forward to it. And so let's move down a game update news. Oh my God, guys, I am so down bad for the story. Like it's so freaking good. I don't know about you guys, but I actually really enjoy the story. Anyway, for the game update itself, we do have some interesting ones because we are finally getting a new character that is farmable. Ruka. And so Ruka.
Rooker will be available on 24-3, which is honestly great news because I still don't have Rooker actually. And it's not only great news that Rooker is coming, it's also because like it means that the next ones that are coming are going to be like your Kasumi, like your Anne. We are finally going to be getting like those nodes where we can farm for those characters instead, like the ones that were recently released. And so next we have our equipment cap going up to rank 13 with maximum of five equipments. So that is everything except for top left. And the level cap is going from 130 to 133. And this is dropping on 419. Wait, that's before CB. Hold up. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. 419. Wait, let me check. 426. That means that we might have an issue here. And it means that we need to do some farming before CB. So boys, yes, farm for your Ruka hard shards. But also, I think we're going to have to be farming for our, uh, our fifth equip there. Generally speaking, that fifth equip is actually not overly important for DPSs. And that is because like the middle left component is usually an armor piece and you don't usually want to equip the armor piece because of like the decrease in TP gain. So honestly, we'll see how it plays out. Like I could be wrong. It could be one of like the biggest, highest damage, giga damage kind of equipment accessory thing. But I'm looking at this one, 419, and I'm looking at this. Like there might be a problem, but I think it's going to be a small problem. Anyway, moving on, we've got the new BGM added to Memorial Jukebox, which is always nice, but this is a real nice one. We've got the max level of furniture furnitures going up from 13 to 14. Now, here is probably one of the biggest news for a lot of you. We've got the guild house furniture storage capacity going from 600 to 900. Boys, I am always lurking the subreddit. I am always lurking the Discord channels. I know that there are a lot of you that have been begging for this for a very long time. And so to this, all I can say is enjoy. And then aside from that, we have the we have the new furniture. I don't think we've seen this one yet. But with that, I think that concludes all of the content updates because we are going to have a hard quest drops times two. Yeah, give me the Ruka boy. As well as the 2x dungeon drop campaigns. Remember to rig it. And so yeah, that's going to bring us to the end. Ta-da! And so I do have a secret question for you guys, and it's actually not related to this update. I want to know if you guys watch any other pre-con content creators, because I'm looking around, I'm looking at some of the other content creators, I'm like, Where, where'd you go? <laughs> like for me, when I don't make videos, it's because of like personal reasons. Like I always want to be pumping out videos, right? And I like pre-con, I love pre-con. But yeah, I'm kind of just like, <laughs> Wait, is it just me left? So my boys, let me know if you guys are actually watching any other pre-con content creators and drop them down below. And if you do end up dropping a comment, well, thank you guys so much for that. You guys already know the drill. If you did enjoy this video, please consider a like, a subscribe, notification bells on because sometimes I do stream. But otherwise, as your girl on Ninon once said, Nin Nin boys! Also, she said that all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.